Hi, I wanted to share this with you because it's Bell Let's Talk Day and uh, we've, we've gone through a lot in the last little while. Um, my husband died um, 21 days ago. He, uh, the day before COVID was announced, he was uh, diagnosed with lung cancer and we thought we were going to beat it. He had a seven centimeter tumorous lung in a uh, cancer tumor in his lung, upper right, removed the lung, removed four ribs. We thought we beat it, moved part of the lung. Then it came back with a vengeance, seven, 13 centimeter uh, tumor in the other lung, all sorts of small little seven centimeter tumors in both lungs, then into um, bone cancer and then into brain cancer. Um, but the thing is, he was positive through the whole thing, which kept me positive. And as many of you know or don't know, I had a brain tumor five, six years ago now. And through that, I stayed positive. There was no way I wasn't going to beat that. And he stayed positive. And all my friends stayed positive. Those that weren't positive, those that were the poor you kind of friends, I realized I, I stepped away from them because I couldn't handle anything that was negative or sad. Um... So you've got to surround yourself with positive people. You have to stay positive because the alternative really is stupid. Sorry. I went through depression after my brain tumor because I was exhausted all the time and I didn't realize I needed rest. You need to rest. You really need to sleep. I know everyone says that, but holy, it's important. And you need to move. Motion is lotion. You need to move. You need to walk. You need to set a timer and go for a walk uh, somewhere safe, obviously, with COVID. When people want to help you, I am not good at taking help. You need to step back and let them help, but in the way that you're comfortable. I mean, if someone would come to my door, I would hide against the wall for the last little while, realizing I have a glass door, but... Um, I, uh, I, they got to know the fact, I'm okay, I had this huge sign on the door that said, do not knock, shh. <laughs> um, they knew I needed to be alone. So all I can say for Bell Let's Talk Day is you really need to care about yourself before you can care about anyone else. So while Jerry was going through everything, um, I, we'd set our alarms every four hours, or I would, to make sure he had his pills on time, make sure that uh, he got the exercise we could try and give him. Um, but he was positive, even up until three days before he left. He was doing our HST. He was, he was, his brain was so alert, so alert. And that stupid cancer just ate him up and took him way too early. But... We were okay because he was going to come home and uh, we were changing the uh, living room into a um, um, a hospital room and uh, I was learning to use the lift. I got him at the hospital uh, out of bed onto a chair because he couldn't move from the waist down with the brain tumor, brain cancer. We think that's why he couldn't move his legs. We were not sure. We never really found out why. And um, he uh, was, he was, so that's okay. You know, we have so many travels. We've had so many adventures and um, he was okay with that, which I, anyways, you got to make the most of what you've got. You've got to say, I love you to people you love. Don't forget to do that because that's something Jerry was really good at. He would, before he hung up the phone with his friends, he would always say, I love you. He had friends from the first day of kindergarten. He had friends from high school, from public school, from all of his walks of life, all the different places he's worked. He had friends from when his kids were young. He had friends from when he's coaching baseball friends when he was playing pool, friends from when he was making pool cues, friends from our business and all our networking, friends from all our interns, all these young people that we would take on as interns throughout the years, they became, became friends with him. He's so, so supportive, always, always seeing the very best in people. And that was a big thing is I didn't realize how much I depended on him to make me feel strong. And that's kind of bizarre. Again, for Bell Let's Talk, you have to see your worth. 
I mean, it's amazing when you have someone with you who sees it. You know, he used to call me GGG as gorgeous Greek goddess. He also used to say there was absolutely nothing I couldn't do. Always said that. You know, I'd be scared because I'm, you know, about to do another presentation for for Esso. I've been working with them for seven years. I think, why are they working with me? I adore them. And you know, and I, anyways, or why is you know so and so working with me? And and he'd say because you're authentic. You're real. You care. You just keep on being you, and you're good at what you do. Because there's so many people that are good at what they do, but you got to be you. And you will figure out who it is that wants to work with you. And if you can't be you and you're trying to be someone else, then you don't, you, you won't be able to sustain it. So you got to be you for yourself first, for your family, and for whatever you do for a living. You really got to be you. And that's what he was all about. You got to be you. So... For Bell Let's Talk, I suggest, I mean, my, uh, I would be, I'm ADD uh, and HD8, whatever, and I don't, and I have my calendar. If I don't have my calendar, I'm dead. So you need to figure out what system works for you. Uh, You need to know what kind of workout works for you. You need to know what balances you. As soon as I'm out and I walk, about three kilometers and I start feeling like a human and if I don't do that I'm a roaring bitch so raring whatever but I am gonna miss him I miss him bad I'm so mad at him for leaving so mad but you um anyways uh, you got to figure out what uh, gets you strong and what keeps you going and um I think everyone is different. You don't have to be like someone else. That's what's really cool is everyone is different. And uh, that's what I adore about people is they are different. They don't have to be like someone else. And he taught me that. He also taught me to calm down and settle down. Don't be that type A bitch that he met. When I first met him, I was pretty much a type A big city woman. And uh, he learned me, taught me to settle down and, you know, travel in the bus and as slow as a bus goes and and appreciate people really appreciate people really listen to people that's what he was all about so i love you honey I'm gonna fucking miss you why did you have to go but i know that i don't actually know what i know you know what and that's okay all i know is that i will balance i'm gonna do stuff that's gonna make him proud so effing proud don't know what it is yet but I'm gonna keep on doing what I'm doing of course because I absolutely love it oh. so I guess for Bell Let's Talk Day just be kind to yourself be kind to people around you say you love you I love you to people that you love you know and uh, I wish we could physically hug but we can't so virtual hugs you know talk to people reach out and talk oh. And that's what I guess it's all about. Bell, let's talk. Uh, you know, and sometimes what I found a lot of people doing were just listening. The last uh, 21 days since he left, those were the smart people. Then we're just listening. <laughs> yeah. Because no one's gotten through it. I've lost a dad. I've lost a mom. I've lost a grandma or two. I've lost my ex husband. Uh, I've lost good friends. And, you know, it's different each time losing your your husband your best friend your 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 lover your business partner the person that you take travel trips with now you travel buddy it's losing everybody at once it's kind of kind of very different but everyone has a different relationship with their spouse so i appreciate those people that lost lost a spouse I got to relate with them a little bit more during this, but even in their eyes, they understood how everybody is so different. I'm I'm breaking this bus by mistake. Oh my goodness! Oops. So I didn't mean to break the bus. Um. So it's just hard, but it's not the hardest thing in the world. Every time you think something is the hardest thing in the world, something else harder comes along, unfortunately. When he first had his 7-centimeter tumor, I thought, wow, this is hard, you know, so hard. 
you know, and he had it out and he had to recover from the operation. We thought, wow, that was hard. Maybe he recovered. And then he was actually even able to walk and drive the car a little bit. And then all of a sudden, pain just overtook his body and realized he had cancer everywhere in his lungs. And we thought that was hard. Well, got rid of the pain. And we thought, okay, yeah, we can live with this now. Immunotherapy seems to be kicking in. Radiation's kicking in. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he couldn't move his legs. That was hard. And then we got over that. We realized, okay, who cares? Moving your legs is overrated. His brain was completely intact. So every time you think something is hard, just you, you, there is a way to get over it. And it's pretty amazing. He had to go, though. Um, and it's very fresh. He's everywhere in this freaking house. I walk around in circles, room to room. But that's normal, I guess. Uh, his kids were here, which was beautiful. They were very gentle. And they got to break in slowly because they isolated at home. And then when they got here, they were isolated for 10 days. So we kept them at the... They stayed in the basement and cleaned out the garage while they were here. I would sit at the top of the landing and have coffee or dinner with them, and they were at the bottom of the landing. So break it broken gently because I hadn't had any human contact, really, certainly in the house since March of 2020. So that was, uh, that was I thought I was going to be overwhelmed, but it, it was beautiful. Kind of now allows, enabled me to talk to humans versus hiding on a wall through a glass door. I don't know if this helps at all, but all I can say is stay positive. I just feel like I'm missing something. You've got to stay positive. That's the only reason I'm doing this. I want you to know that you have to stay positive. That's what he taught me. And the more positive you are, the ha he was in zero pain at the end. I got to be with him and hold him. He was in no pain. You got to stay positive because the opposite is stupid, right? And we had plans. And you got to keep on those plans. I don't know what my plans are going to be now, other than work. Work is safe. I'm, I've had uh, a good. Uh, I feel good when I work, which is kind of weird, but I think that's the point. Is you got to find something that's an extension of you when you're working, so it becomes almost therapeutic. My work is therapeutic. Walking is therapeutic. Oh, swimming is therapeutic. Kayaking is therapeutic. Why do we live in Canada where you can't do those things year round? Anyways, I love Canada. I love you. Thanks for listening.